Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and my guest today is Shane Inman. Shane is the winner of the 2018 Santa Rosa Marathon and the 2018 Ventura Half Marathon, which happened just over a week ago. He has PRs of 106.57 in the Half Marathon and 225.36 in the Marathon. He is currently an assistant cross-country coach at West Torrance High School, a running shoe reviewer at roadtrailrun.com, a member of the South Bay Runners Club, and is starting a career in real estate in the South Bay. So welcome to the podcast, Shane. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm really excited to be on here. So you just came off of a win, winning the half marathon in Ventura, so congratulations on that. Thanks so much. Yeah, it was a great race. I really loved the course, and everybody out there was really happy and positive and cheering along the way and had a great time. Awesome. So I guess you have some big goals, you know, beyond just, just the half that you just ran. So what is your training like and how do you fit that into, you know, reaching those goals? Yeah. Um, so Ventura was definitely a, a plus for me, but it was kind of just a, a stopping point along the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few people actually after the break were like, oh, so you're going to take some time off or a break now? And I was like, well, no, this actually wasn't my goal race. It was, you know, a good uh, performance indicator of where I'm at in my training. But my main goal is the California International Marathon in December. So I'm trying to keep my volume up and keep my training going strong. Um, I typically running over 100 miles a week and I'm usually doing like one or two workouts a week. Um, and the workouts are kind of based around what that goal race is so this training block is a lot more strength marathon goal oriented workout so Ventura actually felt like a speed workout for me because it was a little bit shorter and faster than um, what I've been working at. Sure so what do those strength training or I guess I should say strength workouts look like for you then? Well, I guess actually, I'm, in, I guess I'm using strength in a different term than you might mean it. I, <laughs> yeah, as I was saying that, I was thinking I probably need to take my personal trainer hat off here for a second. <laughs> yeah, I don't do a lot of like cross training, anything like that. Like I, I, when I say strength, I mean more like longer workouts. Like um, mm. uh, two weeks ago, I did a marathon workout that was uh, four times 800 at well three mile warm up, then four times 800 at full marathon pace. Then an uh, eight mile run at 556 pace, and then back to four times a mile at five, eight, around 518, which is gold marathon pace. And so it kind of teaches the body to run faster later in the workout. So it's about a 20 mile workout, and by the end, your body is pretty beat up, but you got to kind of remind it to get going and fast again. So when I say strength, I guess I mean more like feeling strong in the later stages of a long workout rather than actually like lifting. <laughs> sure. Sure. No, for sure. No, it's awesome. Yeah. I've definitely found for my own running that, that doing that has been helpful to try to do those, you know, n- not to just have the same pace for the long run or different, different runs, right. To make sure that you're working at your marathon pace and all that. So definitely. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. I try to touch on marathon pace at least once a week or maybe twice, but the rest of my runs are really easy and recovery. Um, I mean, a lot of my runs at eight or nine minute mile pace and then my goal race pace is 518. So it's, it's kind of, uh, a drastic change, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting the volume that I need without hurting myself. And so running a little bit slower kind of helps my body recover while also putting in work. Mm-hmm. Now, I guess one question too, because a lot of the listeners might be like newer in, into running, running 100 miles a week might sound just crazy. How, how long did it take for you to build up to that as your peak week for, you know, over the course of your running career? Yeah, that's a really good point. I actually have been running since I was about 10 years old. And I remember starting out, you know, uh, probably a 20 mile week was just ridiculous. And and then sure. I remember in high school at one point I was running about 
maybe 40 to 50 miles a week. And I had seen from other top athletes in, in California that were running, you know, Ryan Hall at that time was in high school running really well. Um, a lot of really great runners at that time were running 100 miles a week. So I thought, oh, I got to go run 100 miles a week. And so that summer, I just tried to build up to 100 mile a week. And my toughest week was an 80 mile week. And in my mind, that was a hundred mile week because it was, you know, double what I had been doing. So I think it's definitely yeah. all relative to what your current level of fitness is because that 80 mile week, I still remember how painful it was. Whereas now sure. I'll do a 140 mile week and it won't feel as tough as that 80 mile week because I've built my way up to it. Sure. And and for some of the listeners, too, just to mention that you were working on that higher mileage when you were younger than some of them might be now. So just taking into mind not only how long they've been running, but also their age can impact whether they can tackle a lot more miles sooner in their given stage of their running career. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. No, it definitely makes a difference. So you also coach at the high school what what are some similarities between what you do for training and then you know the racing and the coaching that you do with the team yeah I coach at West Torrance High School um and the head coach there is uh Jason Druton and he's been there for about 18 years and they won the state championship last year so they have a really long tradition of doing well and the, the kids all put in a lot of work I mean we have about 100 boys on the team and all of them are probably running, you know, close to 50 or 60 miles a week. And they're really dedicated and putting in the work. So for me, um, I really see my role there as more of like a motivator and encourager and just trying to um, keep them working hard. Um, they're already putting in a lot of training. So I just try to kind of remind them that they're fit and that the work that they put in the summertime and the work that they're putting in now is going to pay off. They just need to working hard. And, and so they're already doing all the right things. I just got to keep motivating them. Hi friends, it's Catherine. And if you are using this episode to get up and get moving for 15 minutes and you're on an out and back walk or run, you will want to turn around now. We are seven and a half minutes into the episode. That's awesome. And I know speaking from my own experience, I've definitely become a wiser runner since high school. Are there any tips or things that you definitely you know, focus on sharing with your high school athletes based on your previous running experience? Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's where I'm really able to help them is kind of take their situations in, in situations that I've had. Um, one of the kids actually was struggling with uh, um, stomach pain last week that he thought was appendicitis. Mm-hmm. And I actually had gone oh, through the exact same thing. And it ended up just being dehydration. And so just kind of telling, talking to him about getting more hydrated and, and making sure that he's drinking enough water um, because those little things you don't think about when you're training at, at a higher level than you're used to, you have to accommodate for it. You have to eat healthier, drink more water and sleep, you know. And so just those little things that you might not think about in your normal life when you're training at a higher mm-hmm. level, you have to really pay attention to and sleep and getting in enough water is definitely huge. Yeah, I know for sure. Yeah. It's not, not just about putting in all the miles. There's other things that, that really go into training for sure. Yeah. So, so you have the, the, the guys have their, their team, but, but you also have a group that you run with, you run with the South Bay runners club. How, why, why is that important to you? And how does that help with your, with your training? Yeah, so in um, South Bay here, we have a, a great group of runners. It's probably I mean, over 200 runners in the South Bay Run Club. And just having such a big group to run with all the time has really helped me a lot in reaching my own goals because they're all just so supportive. And when you have that many people, there's always somebody to run with. So, mm-hmm. you know, just getting out the door is half the battle. And when you're running twice a day, it's really hard to find that motivation so knowing that there's a group to meet up with or just even one other person to meet you out the door really helps I love how you share that because you know I think sometimes like I often work with beginner exercisers they might not even be runners yet even though I try to convince them because I think running is such a great great sport and it's it's helped me a lot you know just in 
my fitness goals, but also in, you know, just personally as well. So I love how you share though, that even though, you know, you're, you're an elite athlete and you're winning the, you know, the venture half marathon that even some days it's hard for you to get out the door. So we all, all struggle with that no matter what our level is. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that most runners are more in common than they think they are because I'm oh, like, I ran the race and it seems so fast and so easy for them. But then you see me when I'm cooling down afterwards and my body's broken down and I don't think anyone would think, wow, that looks easy for him. So right. I think there's a lot of training aspects that you don't realize that everyone goes through and the pain of just getting out the door is one I think everyone can relate to. Sure. Now, how, how do you pick your, your personal goals and then make a plan to actually be able to achieve them? Uh, well, I try to make my goals something, I mean, obviously everyone has their own goals and what they, what they want to achieve and why they want that particular goal. Um, so whatever the goal is, I try to make it something that is a stretch that's like tough enough that somebody might call me out on it and say, oh, you know, <laughs> that's not possible because I think that right. if, if it's, if it's, a, if it's something that's a stretch that it's, it's worth going after, um, but obviously it needs to be something that, you know, makes sense with your fitness level and your training and your ability level. Um, but I try to make it a little bit tougher than what might look doable on paper. That way mm -hmm. it is an accomplishment. And even if you fall a little short, you're still accomplishing something else. So I always try to find something that, you know, like for instance, my marathon PR is 225 and my goal mm -hmm. for CIM is to go under 219. So that's going to be mm -hmm. a very big drop I'm going to have to make. And a lot of people right. might not think that's possible. But I feel like if I'm able to do that, it's going to mean that much more to me. And I just have to figure out how I'm going to do that. And for me, that means train a little harder and train a little smarter and figure out how to reach that goal. So I think making goals that are a little bit unattainable, but you know are possible is really important. I love that. Very cool. I'm very excited for you for, for the CIM. I guess it's not next month yet. It feels like it's almost because we're at the end of October. No, it's going to come up quick. Yeah. <laughs> right. First week of December. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I guess, you know, you, you have your goals, you have your plan. Like, how, how do you keep yourself accountable? I mean, anything in addition to working with your, you know, your group, the South Bay Runners Club or anything else that helps you stay focused? Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to write down your goals and, like mm. I try to write down my goals in the beginning of the year and, and make like an A goal, a B goal, a C goal. So, you know, my A goal might be to make the Olympic trials and run 219, but obviously there's still a big gap between that and what my current PR is. So then my B goal might be, you know, break 220 or a little bit, you know, or just PR. And then, so those kind of things are going to hold me accountable to reaching one of those goals. If I fall a little short, you know, I still have that B goal to land on or that C goal to land on. And, you know, you're going to have a lot of bumps along the road of getting there with injuries or trying to get out of bed in the morning when the alarm goes off and you don't feel like it. So by having those goals and holding yourself accountable, I think um, it just gives you that motivation to get out the door and say, well, you know what, this is what I want to do. And if, if I want to achieve that, I need to get up right now. And do it. I can't just lay in bed a little longer or I can't just <laughs> say, well, I can't do it. You got to find a way around it. You know? I love that. And I don't know. I know we were, I was telling you, I love Dina Castor's book was really inspirational to me and helped help me with my marathon goals is kind of keeping some of the her words of wisdom in the back of my mind. Do you have any like other, like, you know, either books or, blogs or podcasts or things that you listen to that help provide you motivation or yeah so many I mean Dina's <laughs> awesome she's so positive and uplifting and I think there's so many people in the sport that are that way um mm -hmm. Ned is an affair guy who's just so motivational and positive and, and happy and yeah, all the uh, little things that you can learn from others is huge Meb actually has this routine that he does to stay healthy um, that I had, I, I worked with Meb uh, quite a bit when I worked at Skechers and one of the um, routines that he does after his workouts was just a really simple set of drills. And it's not anything that's going to wear you out or anything, 
but he does them to try to stay healthy. And so they're, they're like skips and walking your toes, walking your heels, lunges. They're not mm-hmm. strength building. They're more like um, auxiliary, auxiliary drills where you're going to activate those muscles that you might not be using when you're running. And there were drills sure. that I had done consistently all through life. They're not like anything, you know, special. But the key is that he does them every single day. And that was something I never mm-hmm. had done before. And so uh, last November, when he was training for his last New York, I was asking him, you know, what, what do you attribute all the success that you've had? What do you feel like really keeps you performing at your best? How, how do you become a champion? And you'd think, mm-hmm. okay, this guy won Boston Marathon. It's got to be something amazing. And, and he's like, right. well, you know, last week, I, yeah, he's like, last week I had 132 mile a week. And I'm like, okay, so it's the mileage. But he's like, no, the thing that keeps me performing at a high level is staying healthy. And he's like, the way I've done that is through these little drills. And I was like, well, you know, I keep struggling with injuries. So um, I just was like, it's worth a shot. So the last, uh, since last November, I've been doing the drills every single day after my run. And I feel like it really helped. It's not something that you would know a difference from. You don't finish and think, oh man, I feel so much stronger now. You just Mm -hmm. do them and it's, it's activating muscles that you weren't using on your run or your jog. It's, you know, side skips and things that are working muscles that didn't get worked. And so I think it helps activate those muscles when you're tired so that they don't get worn out when they're tired. That's awesome. Is there a way to find, do you have like a, a link that has those posted somewhere? Like how do um, we get? <laughs> those, are actually, they have, uh, those are actually in Meb's book, um, Meb for okay, Mortal. Cool. Uh, it's a great mm-hmm. book. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He, he that's what is so great about the story is everybody is so open about sharing, you know, what's gotten them to the level they're at. Everyone's so helpful and wants to see others improve and succeed. Yeah, well, I, I've heard of his book. I had I hadn't checked it out yet, so I'm excited to check that out. And definitely, as as a runner who had some years where I just just did a lot of running and had an IT band injury, I could definitely buy into the fact that those would help. Absolutely, like I said, they're they're not anything. Yeah, they're not anything crazy. You would never look at it and be like, oh, well, there's no way I can do that exercise. It's more like mm-hmm. you finish it and you're like, that was it. But, you know, if you're doing it day after day after day, it's creating that resiliency to your body that, you know, is going to help from breaking down during injury. Sure. Well, Shane, this has been awesome getting, you know, your tips and learning about your goals and how you reach them. How can the listeners follow you and keep in touch with you? for for more tips and advice and to follow your journey to the CIM. Thanks. Yeah, I um I've got uh pretty much all my Instagram, social media, everything is just my first and last name, Shane Inman. Um and mm-hmm. then I also on I have a website, shaneinman.com that I've been updating with uh my training. So you can actually see um the I think maybe 12 weeks leading up to CIM I've been putting the paces I'm running, the distance I'm running, the workouts I'm running, just so that everyone kind of has an idea of, um, you know, I'm not just running this pace because I'm talented or something. I'm putting in the work. And I, I've learned a lot sure. from other people's training logs. So I think it really helps to see what others are doing and that it's not just luck of the draw that, you know, you got to work hard to get to what you want to have achieved. Right. No, for sure. Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for taking the time again. And I'm excited to keep, keep following you on social media myself and maybe, maybe even seeing you out yeah. there in Hermosa. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You got to come out to some of the South Bay Run Club events. We've got runs on Tuesday nights at Miracosta Track and Thursday nights at the Sketcher Store in Manhattan Beach. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi friends, it's Catherine. I hope you are leaving today's episode feeling inspired by Shane and excited to put on your running shoes, even if it's just for a few minutes today, and also follow his journey to the CIM, the California International Marathon, in December. Before I let you go, I have some exciting news if you are a runner or someone who works with runners, and that is that Dr. Jason Karp, who has been on the the podcast show two times himself. Definitely go and check out his episodes. I will leave links in the show notes. He has offered us a discount for his upcoming certification program that's happening just outside of San Diego and that I will be attending myself. So the 
program is the Revolution Running Certification. It's a full day event that happens on November 17th this year, 2018, from 9 to 5 p.m. You can attend if you are a fitness professional. If you are ACE certified, like myself, you can get your full two years worth of continuing ed credits from this program itself, so really great value. If you are not a fitness professional, you can attend for a lower cost and get all the great information that you can apply to your own running. So really excited about that. I will leave the code in the show notes. It's FITARMADILLO, all one word, all caps, for 15% off the registration. I hope you get to attend. I will be there myself. I already am pretty close to my certification credits for my two-year period, but after speaking with Dr. Karp and hearing some of his other pre-recorded talks, I decided that I wanted to make a go for it and go out to San Diego next month and learn from him and be able to really give my audience and my clients a lot better run coaching myself. So I'm really excited. I would love to see you there. Fit Armadillo, all one word, all caps for 15% off. If you'd like to join us, let me know if you have any questions. And if you subscribe to the podcast, I will chat with you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Bye.